Welcome to the Home Business Podcast with Richard Captain Henderson, publisher of Home Business Magazine, and Sherilyn Colleen, managing editor. This how-to show helps you successfully operate your home-based business. Greetings and welcome to the Home Business Podcast. I'm Richard Captain Henderson, your skipper at Home Business TV. Hey, how's it going? I'm Lynn, your co-host. Let's secure for seeing, get away in our post-pandemic world. Influencer marketing is growing in its importance to small business success. Influence marketing leverages social media to make more personal connections to your target audience. You can use influence marketing to grow your business or perhaps make the leap to being an influencer yourself. To learn more, we are joined today by one of the most knowledgeable and established influencers in the market, Elma Biganovich. Along with her sister Amra, these two mega star influencers with over 2.2 million followers are founders of A&E, a large digital agency. So hello, Elma Biganovich. Welcome to the Home Business Podcast. Hi, thank you for having me. Hey. How's it going today? <laughs> so, it's, going, it's Friday. Yes. That's right. So you're, yes. uh, I, I guess, sort of based in New York, but like a lot of people, you've flown the big city and uh, you're, you're in Indianapolis now? Yes, that's right. So I've escaped the, yeah, the density. Um, it, it's a bit stressful in the city right now, um, just to get some fresh air. Yeah. <laughs> Peace of yeah, mind. I, yeah. Feel safe. <laughs> that seems to be a lot of people are, uh, a lot of people are doing, they've been asking the question, uh, what's the future of cities? But uh, thanks for uh, taking the time to join us today. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. So let's get started by learning more about you. Elma, how did you get into influence marketing and then rise to the top as an influencer? Sure, so um, we, so my sister and I, um, so she's also my business partner, we got in it by quite an accident actually. This was late 2012 before Facebook pages even existed. Um, yeah, I imagine a world <laughs> without Facebook. I can't imagine that world, I don't know. <laughs> But it, it didn't then. And um, yeah, my sister, basically what had happened at the time, there were very few publications in the lifestyle space that were, you know, authoritative like Vogue, Elle, Harper's Bazaar, and Style and so forth. And so they were becoming increasingly out of touch uh, with an everyday woman. So um, we decided at the time, we, you know, talked with our friends and basically Amra one night, um, set up all night, figured out HTML and CSS code and put up our first blog and what we wanted to do we wanted to basically bring you know everyday relatable content that was like the prettier version of everyday reality but still something you know if people were for example traveling on a budget to Croatia or looking for skincare products you know within a budget um, that they could you know find this there so it was basically a magazine um, a blog magazine and then that was like I said catered to you know women that you know like to travel like a certain lifestyle like fashion beauty interior design and just you know everyday lifestyle tips. So you're almost kind of an accidental entrepreneur where you just kind of stumbled into this and and it, it was a winning uh, a winning concept a winning a winning space to blog in where it, you kind of were able to to, to dominate that. Yeah, that's right. I think, um, I think, you know, what we did very early on um, is that when we launched this blog, we also made this basically, you know, uh, a network of our friends who also were eager, they had led the same lifestyle, you know, they had traveled, um, they loved, you know, healthy eating uh, food. So they wanted to put this out there. And so we basically started, you know, with a network of our friends who started writing. And then I think it was three months into it, we had over 100,000 views wow. on our blog. And this is what the first time the advertisers started approaching us. Um, which was interesting at first, it was just, you know, collaboration on exchange basis, but we figured, you know, because we didn't, Amr and I didn't come from the traditional marketing agency backgrounds, you know, I'm a lawyer by, you know, by training in New York bar, went to Georgetown law and Amr at the time um, was working as she's an economist working on, was working on world bank projects. So um, we figured, you know, when the basically brand started approaching us, if they were willing to do this on an exchange basis, um, meaning, you know, they were willing to expend their labor and cost for labor and product that there must be basically, you know, payment involved. Um, so this is when we basically, you know, got together and, and, and said, you know, this is a business. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's really interesting in that uh, it looks like a critical part of that was you were able to start building a community 
which you know then ties into social media and that's where everybody wants to be having a good strong community in your case it's linked to a lifestyle which you know there's there's an incentive there for people to stay connected into that community yeah that's right we were you know so instagram had launched in 2010 and basically in 2012 like amra and i were one of the first influencers i mean the mm -hmm. the the word influencer marketing wasn't even coined a term until much later but yeah we were one of the first ones on the platform so we were able to take advantage of that in that sense and i remember at the time you know my friends in law school they were saying like what are you doing are you just like taking photos <laughs> i'm gonna yourself? make like, money the internet? <laughs> yeah like what what is you going should on use that law you should use that law degree to trademark influence marketing and, and grab <laughs> you know and, and grab that one what this is a um yeah, this is a fascinating, I, I took a look through your Instagram and it, it's, it's really nice. I mean, you scroll through it and you can really get a flavor for, you know, all the travel you're doing and that, and that lifestyle um, angle to, to everything. And uh looks like it's really, everything's moving in the right direction. But, you know, Emma, help us, our audience to better understand influence marketing. You know, what, what exactly is, what exactly do you see as influence marketing to be? Sure. So influencer marketing, it's basically using, um, so, you know, there's, there's a variety of levels to it. So it's using influencers and influencer essentially, because someone asked me what's the difference between a person with a huge following and an influencer. So influencers is essentially somebody who has built a community around a certain topic. And it could be like the widest topic could be lifestyle, but even within that, you know, lifestyle, you will understand, you know, are you, you know, as a company, are you addressing the luxury market? Market. like those buyers are you addressing your target and Walmart market right so you can have that you know lifestyle split if you will but then you can have influencers who really specialize in certain areas like fitness fashion travel you know interior design so it's just a food it, it's an array you know you have foodie influencers so influencer marketing it's basically brands um, partnering with influencers and then placing their products strategically in front of the, you know, target audience that makes sense for them. And, you know, having the partnerships, you know, what we always advise continue for a longer period of time. So you see the mm -hmm. effect. But yeah, it's basically, you know, getting in front of whether you are a brand that has existed for over 25 years or you're a new brand, you still have to remind your audience, you know, that you exist. You have to give them, serve them updates, basically entice them. Why do they want, you know, in basically proliferation of internet shopping, why do they still want to buy with you or stick with you? Or why are you better choice than the competitor? So it sounds like some critical success factors on this is you got to focus in on a niche and identify that niche, but then co constantly be interacting with that niche to kind of build that cohesion with the community. And that's where the influence really takes off. That's exactly right. Yeah. So that's what we, you know, as an agency, and I should have mentioned, so Amr and I essentially, you know, we transitioned to an agency because as we grew in our following, we got too expensive for the small businesses and startups. And so the repeated question was, you know, how can we continue working with you? Mm -hmm. So um, without knowing it, Amr and I essentially, you know, consented to becoming a marketing agency. So I, I forget and, if you <laughs> answered this, but did you end up staying in law school? <laughs> <or> <laughs> So yeah, so this was my, this was the LLM part um, when we started the business. So no, I didn't complete my LLM. I left, I um, took a leave of absence. So I still wasn't sure whether, you know, I was going to do this, take a permanent route in this direction. I took a leave of absence and then, you know, our first client, we got our first client April, 2014. And so after we got our, you know, first client, I knew, you know, and I, I wrote to the law school politely and I said, you know, I don't think I'm coming back. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is basically the the start, you know, of of the journey, if you will. So, um, but yeah, we essentially became a marketing agency, and what we did because the the request was, well, if you could, you know, do the success for yourself on social media, could you replicate the model for us? Mm -hmm. And so Amr and I, you know, I remember had a, a long conversation, and we said, why don't we give it a try? Um, because it just, you know, it was the same question over and over again. Um, and then essentially, of course, we realized like with social media, the, you know, one of the secret ingredients is also content. So you couldn't just manage the page without right. understanding content and, and putting a strategy forth for that. So then we started, you know, doing photo production anywhere from in studio for e-commerce to influencer 
photo shoots and just you know casting. So you kind of had to figure it out. There wasn't there wasn't really a playbook in place. You had to you and your sister had to figure this out day to day on you know what your clients need. That's exactly right. I think, you know, the kind of, it was the right timing because I don't think anybody knew at that time where social media was going and that social media were going to be in fact become advertising platforms. Yeah. So um, we, you know, again, I think it was the right timing and we, we figured this out and maybe had a tough time because we didn't come from the traditional marketing agency background, but at the same time that allows us to be very innovative and take advantage of the existing technologies that were available. So I guess you still got it on that to-do list to get back to law school and my <laughs> <laughs> LLM. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd, be, you'd be surprised everybody kind of has to make that decision I had to make it where you know you got a business and you it, there's, a, there's only so there's only so far you can take it part-time and then you got to make the decision are you gonna jump in full-time or just pull the plug on it so um, looks like you looks like you made the right decision but law school can wait <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah my LLM can wait um, <laughs> So Emma, how exactly do influence marketers generate revenue? I understand it's not just about posting sponsored articles or sponsored, you know, posts with your pictures and everything. Exactly. So as you know, as the time went on, um, this this industry very much developed. Um, I think it was 2000. So last year it was eight billion, um, and it's oh, yeah. it's supposed to be yeah. I think 15 billion by 2022. Of course, this was pre-COVID. But um, so basically, the way that you know brands, of course, were also got entrepreneurial and were looking at ways to monetize from influencers and in different ways. So of course, one of the you know one of the most familiar ways was to do you know sponsor posts. And then another that, you know, that emerged that was huge within, you know, the beauty industry is basically these influencer namesake brands. And, you know, oftentimes it's, you know, brands that partner with the influencer and create a brand. So this, like I said, in the beauty industry, this is very, very prevalent. Um, and you can see, for example, when you walk into Sephora or even like go on their website, you know, Huda Beauty dominates. She's an influencer from the Middle East. Um, she has a very, very loyal following and she started as a YouTube influencer and now of course has her Instagram channels. So her, Jeffrey Stark, he's huge in the U.S. Um, uh, there's just, you know, Kylie Jenner obviously is one of the, the Wait, so you're saying they put their name on the product then and link it together on, on an entire line, on an entire, high, entire line. line, right. So they launched their own brand name, if you will, you know, personal, it, they're, they're using their own name and, um, and basically, so beauty companies, you know, it's, it's a, basically like a, a royalty partnership deal with beauty companies. And so they will use the influencer and their, you know, really fame, uh, online fame to monetize on that. So this has been, you know, beauty industry is one industry where this has been done. Um, and it, you know, obviously keeps going. Um, then also fashion industry, they've used capsule collection, limited edition collections um, with fashion influencers. You know, Amazon also has basically a program for influencers um, that, you know, partner with them and then, then sell, sell their basically, you know, namesake brands, if you will, for again, limited time. And, um, you know, Nordstrom also does this again, it's, you know, for fashion industry as well. And then food industry as well, like GNC, for example, you know, they've partnered with health and wellness influencers and, um, they're using the health and wellness influencers to sell, you know, through their blog. So now it's easy to set up with the new technologies, you know, Shopify set up basically e-commerce on the influencers personal blog where, you know, their followers can shop. So there's many different industries that are doing this. And then, you know, that's another, another one that's, you know, been very, very popular. Obviously that's a huge job in and of itself. Then, you know, influencers have, you know, they do event appearances that also um, they they charge for that. Um, so it could be like a movie premiere, it could be, you know, as a speaker. Um, it could also be classes that are held online. Um, so there's, yeah, there's a variety for content creation of ways for influencers to generate revenue other than sponsored. Yeah, I'm kind of learning a little bit here as, as you're you giving some really good points. It basically, as an influencer in this social media world, they they can, if, if, if leveraged for a product or they, they become almost the face of it, they're, they're attached to it. So it, it, it just makes a natural evolution of this to actually link the name then to the product and then expand on it through diversification. That's exactly right. Yeah. It's just that they, you know, influencers, what they've done very well is that 
generated such a loyal following and generated from, you know, basically like the very early days, if you will, of, you know, the internet, at least for millennials and Gen Z, right? So it's, you know, they, they basically have occupied certain spaces, they've gained the trust, and they also won't put out products that they don't themselves don't endorse because they know essentially that means losing their followers, which is everything. So the people that follow them have, you know, have purchased and continue purchasing brands that they recommend because they trust them and they see that there's, you know, a certain level of responsibility too. So in that sense, it's kind of like a self-policing, if you yeah, will. Yeah, got, you got to maintain, you've got to maintain your credibility because boy, in that, yeah, that social media spirit could, it could vanish in a split second. You know, if there's if there's something goes uh, goes wrong with that, what well, Amber, what are some of the ways that a small business owner who you know who might lack a large marketing budget themselves use influence marketing? That's a great question. So I think for for small businesses, you know, it's okay start out small. What I would definitely recommend not to do this is one of the common pitfalls: do not hire an intern and think that they can do it. You really need to work. Yeah, yeah. Because well, that because, applies to a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because you really need the the technology has evolved so far from you know 2000. Well, you just click post. Now you can yeah. embed links, you know, you can use links to track traffic, which you should, you know, from different platforms, because depending on your target demographic, you may want to use YouTube rather than Instagram, you know, Twitter, and Facebook, again, depending on, you know, how old your, your target demographic is, you know, rather than TikTok. So, um, you know, hire some sort of professional. And even if you can't afford the professional full time, hire them part time because it can't, you know, be an intern who doesn't know what they're doing and neither does the management, you know, of the small business. So it's just a recipe for disaster. You're going to say this doesn't work um, because there's, there's, there's so much to it. Um, then again, what it once was, you know, you send like a t-shirt or you send a product to an influencer and, you know, it sticks because again, there's five influencers and they're happy to work with anybody. Now there's a proliferation of so, brands and proliferation of influencers. Yeah. So getting started with this, it, just a typical way of finding a good vendor, this way somebody who understands influence marketing, starting small, you know, just starting That's with what budget you have and then growing from their advice, trying to you know, do it yourself with an intern, which I have seen, I have seen people try to do so many things. You know, they actually look at a business function and say, I'm going to get an intern to do this. And a year later, it's blown apart. Um, but yeah, so just find the right vendor and, and grow smartly and, and test out what you're doing. And it's okay. It's, you know, even like you said, starting out small, that's okay. Like, you know, a thousand mile journey <laughs> begins with a single step yeah. and it's better to do that and do it slowly and strategically rather than just dive into it for one month and do it recklessly and then, <laughs> you know, get out as quickly as you came in. So yeah, it's, it's important to emphasize testing to that's exactly test right. out some concepts and see how they do and build from there. That's exactly right. So touching on that, Elma, what would be the first step to becoming an influence marketer for those in our audience who might want to take the leap and become an influencer? Sure. So, um, you know, for people who do want to become influencers, I would definitely say the first step is like, think about your brand persona again, like don't just dive into it. Like what are, you know, what do you stand for? Because right now there are millions of influencers out there. So you want to understand where you stand out. What are your values? what you know do you want a specific industry and then within that industry do you want to even get more like more narrow like fashion and then go into luxury or beauty and then go into luxury or do you want to do beauty and you know be talking about ingredients and cruelty free and sustainability mm -hmm. so really actually have a well thought through plan <laughs> which you know may sound obvious but it's really you know not when you know so many people just dive into it but um, yeah, personal brand, and then of course work on your content uh, along, you know, to match your personal brand and to match, you know, what you're saying in your caption, what you're advocating. So in the sense, when brands begin to look for you, you're really, you know, discernible, and and they understand when they see you, they're like, oh, that's so and so. You know, mm -hmm. Leandra Nadine is a really good example in fashion. She just, you know, aesthetically and her message and her humor really stands out. Um, so it, she's easy to remember in another. You got, you got to have a certain image, like a brand image or almost like a trademark that people That's will start associating. And uh, something I've seen, it's important that all of your different media kind of complements one another. So like when I go to your website, everything kind of works together. And then you go to Instagram and you look around and it, it's integrated. 
a lot of times I see, you know, people trying to get started in this arena, they're, they're kind of, they, they have a different image or a different, different way they're presented in different spaces. And uh, sometimes I think that could maybe get in the way of a, you know, a, of a clear trademarked image that you're presenting. That's exactly right. It's that brand identity that just, you know, pulls through, through each in every channel. Yeah. What do you think about, um, you know, green marketing? I'm hearing more and more that, you know, representing sustainability and, you know, and, and environmental concerns, it's, that's good to kind of work into your image too. Yeah, I think, you know, yeah, sustainability is extremely important because, and we were looking at stats too, it's basically, I think it was 51% of customers will actually drop off if they believe that, you know, you as a brand, you know, as a company wow. or personal brand are doing something unethical. And then 91% said they would switch over to the competitor if the competitor is engaged basically an ethical practice of sustainability. Um, so whether that's environmental impact or, you know, animal cruelty or, you know, being socially responsible because you're a contributing part of your sale proceeds to a certain, let's say like um, charity or nonprofit mm -hmm. that's been heavily impacted by COVID. So yeah, definitely uh, that's, that's become an extremely important part of marketing is, is having that, you know, ethical component to it and what you as a company, whether even the smallest of a business, you know, you can say, I donate 10% of the proceeds right. to, you know, my local community or, you know, to a hospital, um, to healthcare workers for masks, you know, for PP, for, you know, anything for food, their lunches. Um, if you're a food company, that's obviously easy to do as well. You send them something. So yeah, that you're communicating to your customers, you know, what you're doing for your community. All ties into that positive brand image. Well, Elmer, in our post-pandemic world, what do you see as the future of influence marketing? You know, where will the opportunities be if we yeah. ever get out of this COVID-19? <laughs> we will, I'm hopeful. Um, but um, yeah, I think that, you know, one of the one of the things that happened is that COVID basically almost overnight, you know, uh, you sort of you yeah. became an educated online consumer right and it was really hard for companies you know to have the consumer switch over from you know your brick and mortar to go on e-commerce right online shopping mm -hmm. so you know the pandemic forced us to to go online look, look for you know online where you wanted to shop and, and and brands and so forth so i think there's definitely a lot of the silver lining in this there's a lot of opportunity in commerce if you you know if you know how to do it right to set up your business business and to sell through, you know, online essentially. And obviously influencer marketing has a huge part in that because influencers are, they're very cost effective, right? So traditionally you would have to have that, like had to hire a crew for a photo shoot, right? Or videographer and then, you know, branding team for messaging, but influencers, they're basically, you know, they're small businesses in and of it themselves and they're able to you know put together the entire marketing campaign for you for the business and then they're able to shoot it out and you can instantly within second reach hundreds of thousands of targeted eyeballs so i think in that sense like influencer marketing especially for millennials and gen z who have grown up online um, is is here to stay because influencer has essentially they've become what once upon a time used to be like a radio DJ right. who would endorse yeah. certain products or services and now you know it's it's the influencers that are endorsing pr products and services and they have you know they have their like local fans that are following them so meaning like if you're an influencer in north carolina you have the area from north carolina if you're from the northeast you have northeast or you could be an influencer of course mm -hmm. who's larger it could be nationwide or even international so it's very you know it, it's very convenient again but you just as a brand have to have a well thought through strategy to pull those influencers that weigh heavily in your particular market to endorse your products or services. Well, but a key point that you're bringing out there is that COVID-19 is pushing more e-commerce and, and online-based businesses, and that ties in naturally with the influencer marketing space. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's just because, you know, and now with, you know, technologies, they're constantly evolving, for example, with Instagram, 
with you know uh, insta stories and swipe ups it's easy to measure for businesses the effect of particular influencers so you know when you have them endorse your products is that you know you follow the click through rate and you can you know have certain you know kpi so key performance indicators you know is it is it that you're receiving a website traffic is it that they're you're getting the followers to fill out certain forms you know subscribe to your newsletter for example are you maybe engaging in a giveaway so you're gaining a lot of followers from the influencer so you can get very like with influencers it's great because you can really measure the impact quickly and it's very you know evident on its face if it's working or not or not. that gets back to what we were talking about earlier the importance of testing so you got to know how to test and it's very it's you can effectively test in this market vice you know trying to figure out if somebody shopped at a certain store you know how do you track that down but the you know the <laughs> online world where influence marketing is you can you can actually track that that's exactly you can use promo codes i mean there's so many different ways to measure that um we even did for one of our clients wells fargo you know foot traffic to local branches right they were doing a food drive they usually do it during the holiday mm -hmm. season but so yeah you can just you know sit down but again you have to have you know work with a professional um that no you can, interns <laughs> no interns yeah you can you know set out like clear strategies to measure the effect and the impact and see if it's working for your business Alma Biganovich, thank you for being such a wonderful guest on the Home Business Podcast. This has been a great discussion. Do you have any final points you'd like to share? Uh, no, I think I, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share pitfalls and yeah, I think we got through that one. Hey, I learned a lot. This, this has been great. Alma Biganovich, thanks for being such a great guest on the Home Business Podcast. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you. To learn more about Amra and Alma Biganovich and their influence marketing, please visit omranelma.com or our podcast website for more information. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Home Business Podcast. Share your feedback with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our website, homebusinessmag.com. Visit the website for information on advertising. Subscribe to our newsletter. Read our new book, The Home-Based Business Startup Guide. For more information, visit homebusinessmag.com or the expo at homebusinessexpo.com. I'm Richard Kevin saying anchors away. We'll talk with you soon. Until then. Make it a great home-based biz day.